there is considerable justification in the epithet that Bengalis generally attach with Tagore, the Vishwakovi, the world poet, while the general Indian uh, tendency is to attach the title Gurudev to him, which uh, Mahatma Gandhi gave him. Uh, Tagore called Gandhiji Mahatma and Mahatma called Tagore Gurudev. So these two are the origins of their epithets, though there are other versions. Anyway, why Vishwa means world, even his institution's name was also Vishwabharati. As a person, he had an unending and abiding interest in so many cultures of the world, so many different cultures. Here I use culture in the traditional sense that it is just, you know, awe-inspiring, mind-boggling. And he gave each culture and tradition its due place by praising its goodness at the same time pointing out its limitations. Today we will talk about Tagore's admiration for Japan as well as his remorse over certain courses that uh, Japan has taken which is very similar to his apprehension about the adoption of political nationalism in India by the then Indian nationalists. And we see somehow Tagore was right because the problems have not been solved yet, not only in India but in any nation. So there Tagore was quite ahead of Gandhi uh, in the sense that political nationalisms will not solve the problem of nations because so long as we have this, we will always be warring groups against one another. Anyway, uh, Japan, you know, nationalism in Japan. Japan is a country quite close to us and India and China, Japan, Sri Lanka, these have been very renowned signposts of very ancient traditions, civilizations and cultures. Tagore had high hopes for Japan, especially he liked the traditional cultures of Japanese painting, Japanese poetry, etc., which are same, uh, you know, very simple. He traveled to Japan three times, once in 1916, then in 1924, then again in 1929. And uh, during his journey in 1916, he gave this talk, which is part of our, you know, prescribed uh, course in a way, though um, that is nationalism in Japan, there the starting is very interesting. He takes care of, squarely takes care of the myth of the lazy natives, which had been later uh, theorized to a great extent by Edward Said and then following Said by people like Mary Louis Pratt and others. So he says in the beginning of this essay that it is said with some justification that. Asia lives in the past. So this is the European view that we live in the past uh, or we are lazy, we are not um, our mindsets are not conducive to modern civilization, quote unquote, modern by which Europe means that Western civilization, scientific Western civilization. Then Tagore counters it. He gives example of how we have had Buddhism, not example as such, but statement. We in Asia, whether in India or Japan or China, at least in these three countries, you know, unbroken tradition of literary, philosophical, scientific, mathematical, etc. Uh, outputs for thousands and thousands of years. Then how did we stop at one point of time? So at one point of time we cut ourselves off from others. We became very rigid, whether in India or in Japan or China, we became insular. Just as today the world is becoming more and more insular in terms of citizenship, borders, etc. Though through mediums like internet sales we are connected to so this strange dilemma of modern nationhood. Anyway, so we lost the vitality in our cultures and traditions when we cut ourselves off from our neighbors and distant friends. Now, 
so it is therefore possibly a kind of blessing in disguise that the west came and colonized this is my edition tagore doesn't say it so that we had to rethink and re uh, you know re-energize ourselves but here here lies the problem tagore gives two things which have happened and this is continuing till now one is that in the face of the allegation that we live in the past etc some of us have started taking pride in it it is not today's thing it happened in tagore's time also so i'm reading out in india i know a large section of our educated community grown tired of feeling the humiliation of this judge against us is trying all its resources of self-deception to turn it into a matter of boasting but boasting is only a must shame it does not truly believe in itself beautiful phrasing that boasting is actually a must shame shame in musk now musks are to be used so boasting is indirectly acknowledgement of shame so we started taking pride that we belong to the past everything is pure and pristine here everything best in the world it's not only in india but in china uh, japan similar things had happened at a point of time in india just continue tagore has shown this novelistically very well in his uh, novel gora especially gora who boasts himself himself to be a hindu brahmin at one point of time you know doesn't touch the other uh, peop people doesn't make connection etc etc and then <clears throat> i mean people who are not in hindu tradition so devout hindu he discourses and debates against the brahmas but at the end of the novel tego shows that gora is not himself a hindu by but when he doesn't know that uh, he is the son of sahibs who had passed them on to a hindu family during some crisis so gora is symbolically ourselves we do not know who we are actually but we take pride on several things i think the great modern writer rajdi in certain ways has <laughs> taken this idea in his midnight children of tagore's gora though he made it a little more complicated because salim sinai like gora of midnight children salim sinai is not what he thinks himself to be this is the problem with many of us we are not what we believe ourselves to be as gandhi said you cannot be what you are not so gandhi tagore aurobindo and vivekanand would come repeatedly today uh, 11 september the philosophical and spiritual you know exposure of americans to the indian tradition was done by swami vivekananda on 11 september only so uh orient talks back to america because america is now representative of the west and unfortunately many years later on the same day another oriental attack was there on him that is condemnable because violence we do not support neither tagore uh, nor vivekanand or such nor later arvind gandhi not at all not even me to talk back in certain ways so you understand i said two problems tagore is saying one i have spoken another i will speak one is some of us we take pride on the allegation by the west that our head is turned backwards yes we are ancient culture this and that while some others have started adopting whatever has come from the west mechanically that also is another problem because tagore finds the entire western civilization modern western civilization not the ancient not the medieval that is why he loved ireland especially uh, was very close stayed there for quite a few times great friends of yeats later they fell apart so another is mechanical borrowing of the west so one is becoming nativist and the another is becoming a uh, european modern in today's language if we use so the way is in a way in between this is bhava's term not tagore's but i am using it so we will take whatever is necessary from the west to 
re-energize our souls and make us believe in our capacities, not just to imitate them merely. So there Tagore was very much dismissive of the militant nationalism that Japan has started adopting from the West as well as its machinery culture, he said. That Tagore always believed that science is not natural to man. So science is a result of labor study. So here he says the real truth is that science is not man's nature. It is mere knowledge and training. By knowing the laws of the material universe, you don't change your deeper humanity. You can borrow knowledge from others, but you cannot borrow temperament. So I am reminded of Tulsidas, the great uh, Hindustan, uh, I mean, poet from who wrote Ram Charit Manos. He said, "Raja kare, Rajya jai, Jyodha bhaye, Ran jai, Apna man ko bas kare jo sabse se rabon." That the king conquers kingdom. Uh, the warrior vanquishes another warrior, his competitor, but he or she is the best person who can conquer his own mind. So, science doesn't help us change our basic nature. In certain ways, religion did. It is true it produced uh, many bad things also, but properly used, it gave a lot of things. You know, without which humanity may not have survived at some point of time. So that is, literature can change if you read well. But today, even reading literature is also not required due to science. You know, I'm speaking on YouTube, so many won't feel the need for going to the text. Uh, they will say that this will suffice. Yes, for an answer, this will suffice, what I will say possibly. But... It will not suffice to make you a better human being. Please, please read the three texts on nationalism by Tego to know how we are, what we are. And then there is a third way. You need, you need not either follow mechanically your ancient tradition, nor you, follow, nor you need to follow equally mechanically the uh, so-called modernity of the West. As I said, we can choose those things. That will help you stand on your own uh, feet. This is the same idea that we have in Aurobindo. Because collectively we call this the Indian Renaissance, that is synthesis of the best of the East and the West. According to Nirotsi, Tagore was the Nirotsi Chodhuri. Rabindranath Tagore was the last great symbol of the Indian Renaissance. Uh, but I think. Uh, of course, his greatness has different category, but I think it was Shottujit Ray, uh, the last great symbol of Eastern India, that blend between West and East. You need not become fully Western, losing your uh, self-respect, identity, everything. Now, also compare this. We will find this next year, but these are related. Compare this with what Chinua Achebe says in the novelist as a teacher, or novelist as teacher, or Gugi Wathyongo says on the abolition of the English department. So the great minds of 20th century India was dealing with this tough job of negotiating between the East and the West. So Tagore, Gandhi and Aurobindo are united in this that if you at all want to take Western civilization, take the spiritual, the philosophical, Take the minimum of science. Gandhi, of course, is totally dismissive of Western science and machinery. Tagore, not to, not to that extent, maybe up to 80%, 90%. But Gandhi almost was instinctually dismissive. So, more or less, both are in, both are in a grade in their dismissal of Western technology. But slight difference in terms of percentage. Grade is same, Tagore and Gandhi. So... Now, yeah, I have said that now another issue. Another thing is that Tagore says, as we say, science has created more problems than it can solve. So another point that he raises here is that Europeans, of course we can see European colonization, which is the pet theme of post-colonial criticism and many other things, as I often say, that hackneyed cliche, the fact that I am talking to you in English, a language of, uh, not of my 
you know, 14 generations of ancestors and presumably if I am addressing to my students, possibly it is not yours also, mother tongue or ancestor. But that we are, this is the power of colonialism, the power of language translated as the language of power and vice versa. So, the West has created more problems than it can solve. So we had first world at Agorso, it's second world where luckily he didn't see, now coronavirus. So we gave corona from Buddha, that is compassion, which later was translated uh, through Christ in a different way. So it is definitely so, so corona, metta, that is friendship, compassion. But now due to this technological advancement, you know, we have corona, not corona. And corona doesn't show corona on us. So we must listen to these prophets, non-sectarian prophets I should say, like Tagore, Aurobindo, Gandhi and even to a great extent Vivekananda, that there has to be a value, value-based civilization, but at the same time not literal uh, reimposition of traditional values where there were many gaps and uh, many things which are not in sync with the greater spirit of man. Some things were there, not only in India, but Africa. If you read Chinua Achebe's things fall apart. How did the missionaries enter? First they uh, affiliated to them those left outs of the society. There were also untouchability in Africa or Evo society, so they took them. So these kinds of things will not do. There is nothing wrong in fact, it is good if we follow the advices of Christ. But any religion, when there is an organized form, it has different agenda. It has, it serves the state, different states, which may not be in India or Africa, but in Europe, so on and so forth. This with all religion, you know, things are like that, organized religion. So we take the spiritual values, that is what Tagore meant, and then we uh, leave out those structural organizational principles which are as bad for religion as for nation and this is Tagore's main objection to nation that is why he did not like Russia he went to Russia you may be surprised to know that he wrote letters from Russia in Russia city and he predicted that this civilization is good but it will fall one day because they want to frame all men in one shape you know so especially through education that cannot be uh, that is the limitation of Marxism and communism as applied to state policies. Yes, you may argue that there are later Marxisms, uh, you know, there are uh, Althusserian, Lacalo and post-Marxism, etc. But when it comes to the formation of states like China and Russia, that communism thing, it is a very much formal and structured and stricture thing. Uh, which is not finally, it may bring some economic equality among all, but this is not in sync with the spirit of freedom of man, which is a basic uh, instinct. But then with a rejoinder, you should not harm others. All uh, leaders of the world have given this. Now, we come to this issue, that is, <laughs> is the thing, when I talk, I have to talk, say a lot of things. You know, literature is not chemistry, another of my favorite things. So it is not just H2 plus O2 or 2H2 plus O2 equal to 2H2O. They understand a lot about this, but when we deal in, what is our subject? It is sometimes called human sciences. Uh, literature and humanities and social sciences are collectively called human sciences. It's the human itself is our subject, so we cannot be very limited, can we? Now, we come to this, that waste. It has created more problems than it can solve. So I read from Tagore, for there are grave questions that the Western civilization has presented before the world but not completely answered. The conflict between the individual and the state, continuing till it all over the world. Labor and capital, so here Marxist question is taken care of. The man and the woman, the gender question, we can now add the third gender also. The conflict between the greed of material gain and the spiritual life of man. So we can be both God and uh, Saturn. So this conflict, you know, you must have known 
in certain place and in some place not here in Assam, in India, everything is right here. There is no problem. But in certain places, you know, people are doing business even with corona packets, corona kits and all that. And even not certain people, some say that the entire thing is also anyway. But that is unsubstantiated. But small, it has also been turned into. I always feel. Though I do not espouse, as I have said, Marxist philosophy uh, as a whole, but education and health, these two sectors should be within everyone's reach and nobody should be allowed to do business with that. You do business with other things. But education and health, and yes, basic food things. Yes, with luxury, with you know, beautiful Punjabi, Shari, so many things. Mobile is okay. If we cannot have an absolutely communistic state, okay, do business. But uh, my point is that health and education and basic business should not be allowed in any country. That is the biggest weakness of American healthcare system. It is mostly privatized. The uh, fact that in spite of this onslaught of corona till in India many people you know are in a very good position is also due to the fact that we still have a public health care system no matter however uh, you know weak it is at some points but it is our benefit had it been fully privatized in India then majority of us you know would not have been able to get even the basic support that they're getting now so the conflict between so these are the problems that west has created i repeat please read this on page 13 so tagore is quoting all this list inventory the organized selfishness of nations and the higher ideals of humanity organized selfish selfishness of nations tagore approximates in a way in course what the marxists say what the but then marxist nations themselves became like that because finally what happens in any given nation a particular group of people they control the majority in the name of democracy or whatever because per se we cannot have democracy as we had in athens none can have so what are the alternative trajectories? Uh, the conflict between all the ugly complexities inseparable from the giant organizations of commerce and state and the natural instinct of man crying for simplicity and beauty and fullness of leisure. If you don't have leisure, adequate leisure, you cannot produce things. If Newton did not have time to think why the apple fell. Our civilization would have been 2000 years, you know, backward now. It is true that before Newton, some Indian also had spoken about this, but it was not laid out fully. But because Newton could think freely, but now in this technological civil technocracy, you don't have time. You have to produce according to the demands of the market. So after a point of time, there will be no growth. Uh, no new paradigm, no new epistem. So, for painting, for poetry, leisure, not laziness. Tagore was not lazy. But leisure, when you don't have to run errands for meeting your basic necessities of life. If we do not have that in human life, what is the difference between human life and uh, life of a cow or, um, you know, goat? Because they are always driven by the thing of survival if we are also to do that then that is not human enough so all this have been created by whom tagore is saying the western civilization not us so western civilization has created all these problems and i say the same thing it is not only tagore that who is critiquing this remember western civilization is western industrial civilization all these points that he has raised here he has raised Marx is raised in his uh, Capital, which is a very important text, which I go. It's reversed now because uh, the camera is like that. And Dickens, especially in his hard times, and in many other places, what's worth and others, what man has made of men. So all this West has created, but haven't answered them, only partially answered them. A holiday in a week, Sunday. Hmm. employees uh, organization so like some demands are made so 
all this up to be brought to a harmony in a manner not yet dreamt of i am reminded of milton things yet unattempted in prose and verse so tagore says that we must solve this problems in a very human way now this is he says there is japan's task that japan must show to the world that asian civilization is not dead it has all its traditions and cultures but at the same time it is able to solve this questions with the riddles which have been raised by modern european civilizations therefore your responsibility is all the greater for in your voice asia shall answer the questions that europe has submitted to the conference of man so europe has submitted to the conference of man a lot of questions and he exhorts the japanese you japanese people that we must resolve this because already japan was reviving you must have heard about meiji restoration